1632, the records of Emmanuel College, Cambridge, show a new student arriving at the university. His name was Jeremiah Horrocks. He came from Toxteth in Liverpool, very much the poor local boy made good. We don't know how well he did at his studies, but we do know that he studied astronomical tables like this in his spare time. Astronomy wasn't taught at Cambridge in those days, so everything that Horrocks learned, he had to teach himself. At the age of only 21, he moved to Hool, near Preston. He needed to earn a living, and Horrocks was probably the tutor to the children of the Stones family, local gentry, who lived here at Carr House. In what free time he had, he pursued his astronomy. So what sort of person was Jeremiah Horrocks? Well, from the few letters that remain, it's obvious he was a young man in a hurry, a bit impatient and very ambitious. And it was during his time working here at Hall, he was only here for just over a year, that the event occurred that was to make his name. And ironically, he nearly missed it. This is one of the instruments Jeremiah Horrocks would have used, the astronomical radius. It enables you to measure the relative positions of the stars and planets. And it works by sandwiching the two objects between these two sliders here, and then just reading off the angle between them. This didn't give the distances of things, but told you the angle between two objects. So you could plot the position of one object in relation to another. One of the things Jeremiah Horrocks was studying was the position of the planet Venus. Kepler was the first person to work out that such a thing as a transit of Venus could actually happen. In 1627, he predicted that there would be one four years later, in 1631. Unfortunately, Kepler died before it happened, and no one saw it. Kepler reckoned it would be more than a hundred years before the Sun, Venus, and the Earth lined up for another transit. So that appeared to be that. Horrocks used his homemade instrument to plot the position of Venus as it gradually moved against the background of fixed stars. We can only guess at how many nighttime hours he spent observing and measuring. But we do know that out of all these meticulous observations, he suddenly made a very exciting and unexpected discovery. He realized that the transits of Venus across the face of the Sun happened in pairs, eight years apart, and only then was there a gap of over a hundred years. Kepler had been right about the previous transit in 1631. The reason no one had seen it was simple. For observers in Europe, it had happened at night when the sun wasn't visible. Horrocks realized there was going to be a second chance to observe this rare phenomenon that no one had ever seen, and that if he managed to see it, it would be an enormous scientific triumph. The trouble was, when he realized what was going to happen, it was late October 1639, and the predicted transit was less than four weeks away. Horrocks had very little time in which to get ready for the most important day of his life. Though he would never know it, it was a day that would be the start of something big, really big. He owned what he described as a small half a crown telescope, and he quickly got the bits together that would let him observe Venus passing in front of the sun.
he was particularly proud of the accuracy of his scale, all done by hand. Horrocks wasn't a famous astronomer, so he couldn't alert the world to what he believed was about to happen. They just wouldn't have taken him seriously. He did write to a friend of his called William Crabtree, who was supposed to pass the word on to an astronomer that he knew. But the message seems to have got lost. Horrocks was on his own. Horrocks used his telescope to project an image of the sun onto a piece of paper so that he could look at the sun safely. Having closed the windows against the light, I directed my telescope towards the sun and I watched carefully and increasingly for any dark body that might enter upon the disk of light. The chance of a cloudy atmosphere caused me much anxiety. Starting at dawn, Jeremiah Horrocks watched and waited, hoping to see the planet Venus pass across the face of the sun. But he watched in vain. Nothing was visible. Also, it was rather a dull old November day, and there was a lot of cloud about. Perhaps he'd missed the transit. Observing during the afternoon was to be even more difficult. November the 24th was a Sunday, so there might have been various duties which he couldn't ignore, instructing the children in their catechism, accompanying the family here to St. Michael's Church. And although he wasn't actually the curate, given his Cambridge education, he might well have had an unpaid role here at the church as Bible clerk, which would have involved reading from the scriptures. Who hath laid the measures of the earth, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. By the time the service finished, there was barely half an hour before sunset, and the last chance to see a transit for the next hundred years.
About 15 minutes past three in the afternoon, when I was again at liberty to continue my labours, the clouds, as if by divine interposition, were entirely dispersed, and I was once more invited to the grateful task of repeating my observations. Who hath laid the measures of the earth? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? I then beheld a most agreeable spectacle, a spot of unusual magnitude and of a perfectly circular shape which had already fully entered upon the sun's disk on the left. I immediately applied myself to observe it. So, observing alone in his little room, the self-taught Jeremiah Horrocks was to be the first person not only to observe but also to measure the elusive transit of Venus across the face of the sun. I was enabled by divine providence to complete so effectually that I could have scarcely have wished for a more extended period. But what Horrocks didn't realize was how important this brief observation done in just half an hour was to become. Since the position of the Sun was known almost exactly, Horrocks could now fix the position of Venus far more accurately than anyone had ever managed before. In so doing, he laid the foundation for the next transit observations more than a hundred years later. He also showed that Venus was not just a light in the sky, a wandering star. It was another world, a planet like our own that appeared dark when viewed against the Sun since it only shone by reflecting the Sun's light. In his writings, Jeremiah Horrocks reveals that he was beginning to think about the big question in astronomy at that time. How to work out the size of the solar system. But it was not to be. Jeremiah Horrocks was a young man of enormous ability, and it is tantalizing to imagine what he might have achieved had he lived longer. But his early promise was not realized. Just a year later, having moved back to Liverpool, he arranged to meet his friend Crabtree. And the day before he was to set out, he died suddenly. He was 22 years old. <laughs> 